This is Twip. Hey folks, welcome back to another Twip Pro Photo Critique. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson, joined by my partner in crime, Mr. Troy Miller here. For the folks that are watching this in the community, for the last several versions of this, I've been recording them live in a Zoom. For this one, for reasons that many of you already know, this one we're just recording offline because let's just say some life got in the way and I wasn't able to get this one scheduled in time. So mea culpa with that, but bear with me. This week's topic was motion as selected by our good friend, Mr. Craig Stampley, who was our guest critic last week. Thank you, Craig Stampley. Yeah. Um, Troy Miller is back on the hot seat today and is uh, gonna help me review these images. How are you doing, Troy Miller? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I just noticed that uh, as as we were sitting here talking, a bunch, uh, three more images came in. <laughs> <laughs> These people. <laughs> this is turning in homework late, slipping in on the teacher's yeah. desk. Yeah, I love it. That's cool. That's good. I love it. Good. So we got a lot in there. Yeah. 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 This is going to be good. Do you, have you gone through the images yet? Have you seen any that you, uh, you like? Uh, I, I do, except for the last three are new. So I'm going <laughs> to. This is fresh. It's this is fresh. Be fresh. Yeah. And because of the nature of Mighty Networks, last in is the first one we review, right? Because <laughs> we That's review the way it, it works yeah. in the date created order. So yeah, let's dive in. You want to, you have anything to, to share before we dive in or you want to just dive in? Oh, we can just dive in. I'm good. All right, here we go. going to share that screen. Let's go ahead and bring that up. Ooh, I'm sharing the whole screen, aren't I? Hold on, let's stop that. Hold on, let's share. <laughs> that was in the right spot. Yeah, there we go. Let's optimize that, share sound. Here we go, boom. All right, how's that? Perfect. All right, so the, as I said, the topic for this one was motion. First one up is from Michael Rhino. He says, a bit late for the motion blur critique. Yeah, look at him, six minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's 1.48. We re normally record these at noon. It is 1.48, Michael Rhino. So you are an hour and 48 minutes <laughs> late. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. It's all good because you're in the family. Um, he says, a bit late for the motion blur critique. Here's one I took uh, last year while practicing the panning technique. Let's take a look. Oh, nice. Look at that. Yeah. The cool. red pops right out of there, doesn't it? And that's, if I'm not mistaken, it's an Uber? Uber does bikes? I know. I'd, I'd never seen that before. That's pretty cool. Wow. This would be a Colorado thing. Um, and that's it looks electric. Yeah. So what do you think? Yeah, it's a, it's a really it's a really good use of that panning and motion that I that I think that it, it takes a lot of time to get really good at. Um, mm -hmm. I know that Stephen Sharp does this a lot, you know, in his motorsports and stuff. So it's a it's a good technique to use. I love the fact that you know this guy's looking a little bit to his right, so we can actually see a little bit more of his face instead of like just this hard profile. Uh, looks like he's got his AirPods in there, and he's probably you know talking or jamming on his on his little ride or you know commute. Um, the color really works for me. I love the fact that the bike is red. So it really jumps out and we have a simple background. So really good story there. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with all that. Yeah. I feel like this, um, this is a hip dude, man. Look at him. He's got a scruff on his beard going on. <laughs> he got the, got the AirPods and the sunglasses. I mean, fashion forward, clearly with the, with the checkered shirt and striped socks. I can't rock that, man. So yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> on a bright red bike, that man has some style. So I'm wondering what he's listening to. Um, as far as like the, the shot, I love the shot. I agree with everything you said here. I'm wondering, if this was intentional right there, cause that is a little bit distracting that, that block there. So I'm yeah. not sure if that, it could maybe, maybe make that less obvious. Cause it feels like it's, it's the weight of it is drawing me away from the subject a little, it's not egregious. Um, in any way. The other thing I would say that again, not, not really egregious, but my brain is looking at the, the horizon, you know, or the, the levelness of the photo here. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I'm curious what you think about that. Would you, would you make effort to make these more parallel those lines since we have horizontal lines going through the image? 
Yeah, I definitely would. It, 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 it's sort of a, a weird distraction to see that. And that's probably because he was panning at an angle. Mm-hmm. So really easy to fix that, like in Photoshop or Lightroom or Capture One, any of those things. And then you're right. That little spot on the wall is probably a piece of graffiti that was painted out or something. Um, just You can just change the color of it or clone it out. But super solid image, fix the horizon lines or those horizontal lines and clean up that little spot on the wall. And I think it just gets better. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Really cool shot though. Yeah. Good use of motion. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Very good. And these colors, man. Yeah. The colors just pop right out of there. I really yeah. like that. Yeah. It's got good, good color harmony in there. And so right. not too many distracting elements. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Michael Rhino, let us know, let us know in the, uh, in the comments on this image is, is Uber a thing in Colorado? I'm curious about that. Yeah, that's cool. Next up is Armando Brook. Armando says photo critique motion. This was a uh, point, I'm guessing 0.4 seconds during Carnival Parade. All right. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah, this is completely abstract, right? It just brings you right into the, into the moment. You can almost hear the loud music. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I love the colors. I love the abstract nature of this. Um, and what a fun frame. And so classically Armando with, with all those colors and that punch. And I love that. The thing that, that, that I struggle with is I don't know what it is. And um, I yeah. want to know more of what it is. I think that um, the motion isn't enhancing the subject here. It is now the blur is the subject, right? The motion is the subject. Mm-hmm. So it just depends on what your intent is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how would you approach something like this? Like if you were there and you know, you had these, these, these people that are doing this dance, would you, and you wanted to capture it motion, would you basically do the same thing that Armando has done here? Or would you do something different? Would you introduce a little flash to add some more detail? How would you handle it? Um, well, you know, motion, there's a lot of ways to do that. I, I mean, I do these kind of things at, at weddings and dances and, and festivities and stuff. So yes, you, you, a little bit of flash would stop some motion. I like to see what my subject matter is. That's just preference. Um, if you if you see all these colors and you want to go full abstract, this is perfect. So I'm not saying one is better than the other. I like the idea of the both. Um, but I, but because I don't know the context of this image, I don't know what's in there. Yeah. So a little bit less uh, exposure time. So they mm-hmm. blur less or pop a flash in there so that we, we stop an image that will tell, so I can see some faces or something to tell me what it is that I'm looking at. I, I, I mean, I really have no idea. This could be a ride at Disneyland. I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's where a, a caption would help. Or if this was part of a picture story with other images around it, that, that gave this more context than context, then it would make more sense of what's going on here. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But I, I do love the composition that's happening in here. I like the blue on the left. I like the red subject matter on the right. I wish it wasn't clipped off on the frame because I feel like that's a, that bright red is, is sort of a hook. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wish it was in the frame more clearly. Uh, even even being fully abstract, you still got to think about you know leading lines and color harmony and composition. So I wish that red was inside the frame a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, because that's almost that almost becomes our subject. I see. What do you? Right. I don't know. That looks like a. Well, I mean, obviously it's a bird. These are feathers, but that's I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. So with that that confusion in and of itself kind of draws us into the image a little, right? Because we're like, what's right. going on? Yeah, it's hard to see. Yeah. 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 Cool. All right. Armando, thank you for that. Next up is Mr. Jim Peters. He says, dart in motion. If too late, consider it a show and tell. You're not too late, man. You are not too late. <laughs> Let's bring this up. Oh, now I see it. See, when it was small, I didn't really get what was going on or what the motion context was. This is frozen motion. Yeah. Yeah, it's frozen in time. Yeah. That's nice. kind of cool. It looks uh-huh. like he's going right. It looks like it's going to go right where he wants it to go. You know, right but not, well, it. maybe not, not into the center of that dartboard. <laughs> well, it depends on the game they're playing. So, Oh, right. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, um, it's, a, it's a really cool shot. I think the, I think that the struggle that I have with this is that it's floating, you know, everything is kind of like floating in space. Um, mm-hmm. I'm assuming that there's, there's background detail. 
And I would love to see that background detail. I would love to see what context this is in. I still think there's enough light and detail on your dartboard and the darts to stand out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know if, if Jim, if you push them down on purpose to make them really dark or whatever to hide them. Um, but depends on what it is. It would be nice to see some context as opposed to something floating in space, but good, good stop motion there. Is there, is there a world where you would add, like maybe move that, that second dart, this guy, move it up a little bit. So it look, looks like it's coming towards the center and maybe, <laughs> maybe add a little blur to the back of it. Would you do that? Um, I, I don't know that I would move it, but yeah, you could, you could play with it. Certainly. Um, I would probably try to add a little bit of motion blur to that because yeah. I think, I think that would really help because right now the dart in the board and the dart, you know, flying at the board, they, they both have the same life to them. You know, they're both just hanging there mm -hmm. and that's the trick with, with motion. Um, and I, and I don't really understand what's going on. Maybe this is the same dart composited because the dart that's in the board is translucent so oh, something something i feel like they're different there. darts jim you gotta let us know what's going on here i feel like they're different i feel like they're different darts i think i think therefore i am no but i think this would probably have been stronger with only one dart in the shot like either have a dart but then it wouldn't, you know, if you only did a shot with a dart in the board, it wouldn't fit with the motion topic. But if you right. remove the dart from the board and only had the dart flying in, now we only have two elements to consider in this story. And that's someone just threw a dart. It's on its way to its destination. Like you said, add a little blur to it. So it, it has that the action yeah. element in there versus just freezing it in time. Although the, the frozen in time thing is interesting, too, because it's kind of like that you know, boom, this is what happens a split second before impact. I don't know. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think that's what you're saying. So Jim, whatever you, whatever, whatever you did to the image, I can see that the dart in the board is translucent. So, um, it doesn't, it doesn't really come across as real when I can see through the dart. So this one. Yeah. 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 Yep. All right. Very cool. Makes me want to go play darts. Yeah. Oops. Let's get out of that. All right. Next up is <laughs> Craig Stanley, spot on. Uh, Peter Levshin, our resident mental case, as he says. Right <laughs> uh, no no uh, caption on this one. Let's take a look. I'm guessing you've seen this shot before because you've worked with Peter a lot. Have you seen this one? No, I haven't. No, there's he's he's been digging through the archives and pulling out some stuff I've never seen before. So nice. um I I really, I really almost love this shot a lot. Um and I'm I'm teasing Peter a little bit. Uh I I do love the subtle colors. I love that softness. Uh, I, I'm glad that he didn't punch the colors. What I'm troubled by is it's tilted. You know, that doorway oh, uh, needs to be vertical, you know, um, let yeah. the stairs, let the stairs kind of, you know, they're, they're going to fly off a little bit to the lower left, which is fine. Cause he shot it on an angle, but yeah. the door should be straight up and down this um, one right here. So let's draw a box around it. Let's see. Yeah. The framework needs to be straight up and down. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's twisted quite a bit, but I love the shot. I, this is, this is really fantastic. Um, yeah, I love the symmetry um, of this. Yeah, the symmetry, and I love the the because we know what these these robes look like, so we don't need a whole lot of detail in there to understand it. And I love the motion of them kind of entering in. So it's it's that story that uh, we talk about all the time. What is the story of this? Um, the this I think this distracts me a little bit. Like oh, that's yeah, that tilt right there. Um, yeah, so that's, that's actually straight horizontal right there. So I don't know. It looks like, it looks like he did what he could to get that straight. I don't know. Um, and is this straight? Yeah, that's kind of tilted a little bit up there in the doorway. But the other thing that I think could use a little help is, and you yeah. tell me what you think, that guy right there. 
because I, I yeah. get drawn in and I want to know what it is and there's no detail in there. I think I'd rather that not be there. Just, you know, they're just entering into kind of a dark abyss. Maybe this detail down here is fine, but this thing, I don't know what that is. Am I supposed to know what that is? And if so, what is it? So it takes me out of the scene, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I totally you, agree. Yeah, that yeah. that light in the doorway, you could you could pop that out. And then and then you get this sense of space that they're moving into, you wouldn't be distracted by that as much. And mm -hmm. then rotate it, just kind of fix it. Um I would I I'm I'm hoping, you know, that there is the top of the door of that shrine, you know, that that artwork up there, the the top. I mean, that would be wonderful to have that as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those are those are things that I think about when I'm photographing is like I, I, maybe I don't have time to compose it exactly perfect. So I shoot it a little bit wide and then I can crop and I can tune later, but I don't yeah. like to lose pieces of elements like that. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. And if it's hard, depending on the optics that he used to capture this, if it, you know, just a simple rotation won't do it, you might consider using just perspective correction in Photoshop where you can Cor yeah. you know, drag the different corners to get it, get it right without distorting the overall image too egregiously. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Yep. Cool. But I love All the right. tones, yeah. I do too. Yeah, it's really cool. All right, Peter Levshin. Next up is Stephen Scharf, motion blur, genre, photojournalism. John Hopkins exits, like, is that the John Hopkins? John Hopkins <laughs> exit turn 11 at Laguna Seca during the Red Bull Moto GP. Let's take a look. Nice. Classic Stephen Scharf. Look at that pixel yeah. sharp all the way down to the dna level in this thing yeah this is this is great you know the, the more that i look at this i'm just trying to see you know okay what could i improve or what's wrong i'm like looking um and i and i only thing i see is there's a dust spot on the road but other than that uh, oh yeah now i see it steven oh <laughs> i see it right there there's one and that might be one there too yeah maybe. which is just a like 0.02 second healing brush fix away right yeah um it's super i i love the angle of this i like the fact that it's tilted i like the the color harmony which i think just happened to work out maybe with the background and the striping on the street that just happened to to match uh, you know, the writer's colors too. Uh, so that's really cool. And of course, you know, tack sharp, which is important front to back and that we show motion, you know, not only in the panning, which is tough to do, um, but in the wheels, you know, we can see the spokes and this guy's like really into this turn. So, yeah. Yeah. So if you were going to take a shot like this and, and print it large, is this one of those shots where you'd be slapping your forehead because you missed these dust spots in it where uh, you didn't see it before? Oh, yeah. If I printed it and there was a dust spot in there, I would be really mad at myself. Yeah. 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 I mean, anything that I print, you know, for, for clients, um, I'm pretty good at finding those things. Anything that I'm printing, like for the gallery, I'm printing big, you know, that's super expensive. Um, I go through it at one to one and scroll through it, you know, quadrant by quadrant. Yeah. Because it's, it's hard to, you know, when you look at an image and you spent time editing it and you play with it, you, you miss those things. You just don't see those. Yep. You know, in Lightroom, um, if you guys don't know this in Lightroom, if you zoom in, like say you zoom in on the upper left corner over here and use the page down key, it will page down in increments to the next grid in that image. And then when you get to the bottom of that column, it will move up to the next column. So you can just zoom in on the upper left and then examine for dust spots and just keep hitting page down until you end up in the bottom right hand corner of the image to do your mm -hmm. kind of last minute examination. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank you, Stephen Scharf. Yeah, I don't don't really have a lot to add to that. You did an awesome job. So me either. That's why I say anything. This is just, this is just amazing. This is a great shot. So it's a uh, definitely could be printed and posted anywhere, right, on the wall, and it would be it would do that area justice. And you know, the cool thing looking at this shot, let me just bring it back up. One of the cool things I see about this shot is the color harmony in the in right. the the racer and the road and the background. It's all right. tied in together. It looks 
completely intentional, though I'm I'm guessing it was serendipitous, but it looks intentional, 100%. Unless Steven changed the color in Capture One or something to make it more <laughs> harmonious. <laughs> but, you know, what you could have done. I mean, in Capture One, you could change the color of this bike relatively easily, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Yep. Yeah. That'd be easy to do. Make it Very red. Cool. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, red. Black would be hard, though, right? Changing it to black. Um, no. And that's just that's just crushing the exposure way down. Yeah. All right. Next shot up is from some amateur hack, Troy, <laughs> Troy Miller. Sparks and stuff. Tell us about this shot, man. Oh, uh, yeah. I just wanted to point. This is just a fun shot. I thought I'd throw it in there. Um, this was actually taken with my iPhone, and I shot it on live photo. And then you convert it to um, long exposure. Mm hmm and so it just creates this really abstract thing. So when I'm out building something, um, I'm, I'm watching all these sparks fly around. And so it's always cool to try and do a shot. And since I don't want to do the manual photo app on my phone to do a long exposure, I kind of cheat. Well, that's not right. really cheating, right? If I'm using the tools, it's there. No, so. there's no such thing yeah. as cheating. Well, yeah, maybe. So it's fun. So I know what it is. This is actually a, um, a big chop saw. And that's a big thread that you see coming through the middle that's holding the material. So if you've used these, it probably has some similar look to it, but it's meant to be very abstract. Love it. Yeah, it is very abstract. And this could be part of a triptych too, you know, where it's yeah. associated I've images. A series, yeah. yeah, I have a series of, you know, garage tools at work. Nice. Very cool. I like it. I like the color treatment, the very kind of warm, you know, I, I, I can smell the sparks a little bit in this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. Thanks for putting that Thanks, in there. Sir. All right. Next up is Amy Brooks. Speaking of abstracts, late in the day, summer sunset on the Queets River taken in May of 2021. Look at that. Really that could be nice. painted. It could be. Um I, I absolutely love this image uh, so much. This image is just so great. I love, I mean, I, mean, I, I want it for my background or, you know, I want to see this printed huge. Yeah. Um, one, and one of the things that I'm really <clears throat> appreciating this is the subtle tones, but the, the, the highlight on that wave in the upper right hand quadrant in the upper right thirds, that's our hero. That's really our subject. And the intention of it being a slightly brighter, everything else kind of falling out, it gives us a place for our eye to land. We can, we can look around the image and just kind of enjoy all the shapes and everything. But no matter how you look at this thing, that's, that's your subject. That's your hook. That's your hero in this image. And, and I, think that's, I think that's really awesome. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I would say exactly the same thing. Only thing I would add is... You know, if we're nitpicking, right, this, yeah, that, yeah. that thing right yeah. there, I don't know what's <laughs> going on. I don't know what that is. So I would, because we have such beautiful flowing horizontal lines and then that, that thing kind of takes me out of a little bit. And because it's, it's, it breaks the symmetry or the pattern, I get drawn to it. So I would, I would have knocked that out a little bit. Yeah. Just that little, that little, uh, flare, or it looks like a splash, maybe, um, that arc. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah this arc yeah, right not, here yeah not the white water of the wave but just that little arc J yeah exactly yeah just 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 this just yeah. that thing. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> i saw that too yeah. yeah um but it but incredibly well done uh it looks to me like there's been some intentional you know dodging on the corners and the sides and to bring that all down and i think that that's been done very well yeah very painterly yeah this is this mm -hmm. is wonderful yeah. Yeah. I agree. This, this might, this might have to be my back, my uh, desktop wallpaper for the week. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. It's great stuff. Cool. Amy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up is Michael Brown, Northern Cardinal for motion critique. Look at this guy. He's oh, showing wow. off. Look at him. He's levitating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That is so cool. Look at that. God, I need yeah. I need a lens like this, man. God. That is cool. That is cool. I, I do wish that it was centered and I wish that we had some more space around it because you know the fact that it's at the bottom of the frame. So it really feels like the bird is falling. 
Um, oh, right, right, yeah. As as opposed to flying, right? Like if there was more space at the bottom, I would feel like the, the bird was lifting and had some space to go. Would be very easy to do if you have Photoshop. Um, if mm -hmm. not, maybe in the in the crop you have some more space. But I Amazing. I dig the fact okay. that the the head is sharp and the beak is sharp, and that's really great. And what a fun shot. Yeah. No, this is this is tech sharp. Yeah, and that the the for me, I agree that you know I don't I don't really like things that are. To me, that's a that's a uh, that's not the right phrase to use. It the the sides of the frame for me are magnetic. So if you have something too close to the side of the frame, I feel like it's pulling and taking away from the overall composition of the shot. So I feel like the especially in a shot like this where we have this this beautifully blur, blur, blurred background, so and a subject that's tack sharp in the foreground, I want a little bit more space for him or her to play in away from the sides of the frame. And maybe like you were saying, Troy, maybe that's just a factor of the crop where we bring it down like this and add a little bit more space around so that it looks like this, this guy's going somewhere into the frame. Exactly. But yeah, exactly. yeah. But other than that, I think it's, I think it's fantastic. And you, like you said, you, within Photoshop, you can do a content aware fill down here or scale or whatever to add some space in this. If there's no space on the original raw file. Yep. Yep. And that would be a good use of that tool. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. It works for Yeah. It loves these kind of backgrounds too, right? To, oh yeah. To those extend. Are cool all right michael brown thank you sir all right nor is is up next titled simply take off take off wow i really nora like nora bringing the hammer down i know i know <laughs> i know i love I, I mean i love that it's just it's just enough blur everywhere and the head of the of the swan I, i'm thinking it's a swan is still sharp um, I love the color treatment, you know, the soft, subtle tones. I feel like it's over sharpened on the swan's head though. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that right there. Yeah. Right uh, it, there. And it, it kind of, for me, it kind of goes against the softness of the rest of the image. You know, it, it's fine mm -hmm. that it's sharp, but it feels like it's been, been over sharpened or been pushed mm -hmm. a little bit, yeah. which is, which is kind of, it feels kind of odd. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. Um, yeah. Cause it, it's something that would be hard to, to capture, you know, either with your eye or with a camera, right. Where you're, I guess if you had a flash out there, you might be able to freeze <laughs> the head, but the, all this motion and, and slower shutter speed action that's all around. And then this one sharp, piece right there takes you out of it and it makes you, you just even if you're not a photographer you're like wait why why is that so sharp so yeah so yeah. maybe just knock it knock the sharpness back just a little bit so that it plays better with the softness of the rest of the image and in this case the super tack sharp razor blade um is probably not the way to go right we want a little bit of motion a little bit of softness in the shot Sure, sure. And and that's very that, that really fits this theme. I feel like there's been some Photoshop work done in the background, um, like an, a head of the swan's head, right? And you just kind of travel horizontally across like there's some lines that are broken and some smudges that I'm wondering. Yeah, if there hasn't been some Photoshop work back in there, because the continuity of the reflective lines have been broken. Mm -hmm. And that's not yeah. that's not normal. It's it's kind of easy to see. So I'm wondering what's going on there. Uh, overall, um, I love this image a lot. I like the fact that the you know the wings are semi-translucent from the fact that they're flapping and they're moving and the the water spray at the back. And I just I just really enjoy that. So softening that head, maybe fixing some of those little Photoshop telltale signs would be would be good. Yep. And bravo on the composition too, because the composition is cool with the with the reflection. You know, I get it—the symmetry of the, the the subject and the reflection down here, and it just yeah, it's very well done. And placement slightly to the right there to give the yeah, uh, yeah. the 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 bird somewhere to go. So yeah, it's a very well done. just enough space at the top, not too much. Yeah, very nice. I like it. Yeah, wonderful. 
Very good. Thank you, Nora. And next up is Michael DeRay. He says, motion with film. Shot this back when I only use film with a Nikon F4S. Remember those? Yes, uh, I do. Probably Kodak Gold 200. I've always liked the <laughs> paint-like effect I got from film and a slower shutter speed. Yeah, I shot with that camera and that film. Let's take a look. Nice. That is that is really fun. I you know when I I saw this I was gonna comment on you know what a nice ad for the grain you know what a nice filter that was and you know it, which which just kind of shows how unfair it is that we assume everything is shot one way and then you did something to it. That's um, right. Yeah, that that film you know painterly look with the grain is such a nice subtle ad, especially for for guys guys like us that shot film for so long. Yeah. Uh, we tend to recognize it right away. So this is really yeah. wonderful. Yeah, I'm wondering what the what the post was like with this because I'm I'm guessing this was not in a dark room because this to get this. Can you imagine how many sheets of paper you would have gone through to get here <laughs> in a <the> dark room? <laughs> You'd have been you've been printing it you as know, a box, probably a box, maybe two boxes of paper, uh, depending on your level of enlarger skills, right? But you, you have a lot of wasted paper and chemistry trying to get to this point. But with film and you know Photoshop and a scanner, you can you know get get there much quicker. I like yeah, this. Yeah. yeah, this is no, this is really really nice. I I, I really like it. Um, it seems like the blacks are a little bit dark and I don't know, that's probably mighty, you know, coming through cause they, I don't see a floor. Um, mm -hmm. but I always like to see a floor, but even without that, I still love this. I like the, I like the motion. I don't really have a lot that I could add to this. I think the composition is great. I think the way that the frame is filled is, is wonderful. The colors yep. are wonderful. We know, you know, we know that their dresses, there's enough, there's enough of the subject matter left that we know that they're dancing. Um, you know, maybe, maybe, like I said, to, to be able to see the floor, you know, uh, if, if it's there, maybe it's there and I can't see it. So, yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it. What a good topic. Craig Stanfley motion. Look at that. Good job. Uh, I know. I think we've done motion before though. Didn't we? Uh, yeah. It's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah. But it's All a good right. subject. It's worth doing. It is. It totally is. James Glenny says, was looking for motion inspiration that was different from my usual sub su subjects. Uh, and while sitting on a beach with a beer, this guy just slid into my DMs. <laughs> nice. Let's bring this up. Wow, look at that. That's tack sharp. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah, you could do a lot. You could do a lot with that, you know, panning and, you know, letting them fly through the frame and creating some blur. But I, I like the the water being stopped like that. Like we know that he's hitting that. His hair is all blown back. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Nice, yeah. nice treatment with the black and white. Yeah, because it's, it's, yeah, it is really, yeah, because I'm looking at the, looking at specifically the treatment of black and white, low contrast on the, on the background, relatively low contrast on the foreground, and then, you know, right in this middle area here, high contrast. Yeah. And but they're would, not competing. Would, no, no, they're not. And what I would probably do is I'd probably crop, crop out the sky. Um, oh. and then, and then find a nice balanced composition to this guy really isn't adding to this element at all. And if, if we take the sky out of it, he becomes the brightest subject. Well, right now the sky is competing with him. So mm -hmm. I would, I would find some happy crop in there where we don't have the sky. Yeah. But other than that, yeah, it's fun shot. I used to do a lot of that. That's fun. Yeah. The jet skis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did that in Hawaii once, and it, yeah, we had a, we had an adventure. I'll just say yeah, that. <laughs> it. Yeah. it was good. It was good. Cool shot, though. I like this. Good jobs. Good job, James. All right. And then there's Eric Pronsky. Eric says, 
Star Trails, Texas Hill Country, my first attempt into this, a time lapse of 115 images shot over 40 minutes, exposing for 30 seconds each. Detail in the foreground was shot just after sundown and blended into the image. Each of the 115 images is a layer in the final Photoshop composite. All right, Troy. This is you. I've never done this. So you, this, this looks like, you know, what, what it might look like standing on the event horizon as you get sucked into a black hole or something. Yeah. <laughs> this, I don't know. this is an interesting shot. Um, so I did the math and this should be 50, what, what should it be? It should be uh, like 57 and a half minutes because it's 115 divided by two. Um, so it's a little bit longer. So I'm just being picky. Um, I was trying to figure out why there's gaps in between the star trails. Cause normally there, there shouldn't be gaps. You know, if you're doing continuous shots, you know, even if it's 30 minute intervals, there sh once it's stitched together, there shouldn't be any gaps. So I was trying to figure out why there's gaps and there's stars that in the star trails. So there's stars that didn't move. Mm -hmm. which I can't quite, I'm, so somehow the way that it was stacked or, or the image that you layered in there, maybe you layered in an image that didn't have, you know, star trails yeah, to, to blend in. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I love the look. I think it's, I think it's a really fun look. I like the foreground. I like that, you know, the, the, the whole circular pattern, but from a star trail perspective, I'm wondering why you have gaps in there now. Mm -hmm. I know that that like on um, on my Nikon when I would sh when I was shooting a D850 and I did a mirror lockup and I would do star trails, it actually created a pause in between each frame fire, and I would get gaps. So I had to go to a different intervalometer in order to do that. So mm. so it just depends on whether that was your intention or not, Eric. If that's what you wanted to do, but normally you know we the 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 star trails themselves connect. So, yeah, if I look at this, it, I see, I see data when I look at this, it just looks like information. Yeah. Yeah. And you did 30 second exposures, which, mm -hmm. which are cool. You can do 30 second exposures. I normally do four minutes and then stack those because, uh, you have more chance of, of variations when you do shorter exposures, more chance that the camera's going to move than you do for those four minutes. So, but either way, it's, it's the same thing. I, I, I like the square crop. What about the what about the the uh, the processing or the the contrast? Like there's the with the blacks in the sky. Would you push those back a little bit so that the sky was truly black, or is it okay at this kind of midpoint gray? I think it's good here. I, I think it's I think it's really good here. I mean, it depends on where you're at. A lot of times, the sky doesn't go you know perfectly black anyway. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We do get a lot of light contamination. <clears throat> you know, in most of our places that we're shooting. So no, I think it's nice. Uh, it looks like there's a little bit of glow on the horizon, just ever so slight. So that's nice. It gives us a sense of depth. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. This is really interesting. I was looking at when you, when you do shots like this, like my Lumix cameras will give you the option of doing noise reduction at the end of a long exposure. Do, do you opt to let it do that? Or do you just do that in post? Um, so when you're doing long exposures of any kind, you want to turn off any noise filtering because for, for every, every amount of time that you use to take the exposure, you need that same amount of time to do the noise filtering. Yeah. Right. So if your battery fails you in the last few seconds of the noise filtering, you lose everything. Mm. So that's the other reason why you do like 30 second shots or four minute shots with no noise reduction. Cause there'll be a pause at the end of that shot, which may be, a, maybe what happened here, there was noise reduction. Um, so no, you, I turn it off because I want it to take one shot every four minutes without a pause in between, no noise reduction. I turn that stuff off anyway because. And you're yeah. and that the the, the shots like you, you mentioned earlier, you're doing, the, you're triggering the shots using an intervalometer. You're not doing your stopwatch and hitting the button. Correct. Okay. Yeah. 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 That way, that way, it's it fires every single time. Right after it finishes, it starts another shot. Mm hmm. Yep. Cool. Cool yeah. shot. Very cool. Yeah, nice composition. Good job. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Eric.
All right. Karen Sweeney's up next. She says, motion critique, a blue tit sticking the landing, D850 with a 200 to 500 millimeter at three, 320 millimeters, one 500th of a second, F56 at ISO 4000. Nice. Yeah, look at that, just showing off. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. He's looking at where he's going to land. Yeah. Um, Coming in hot. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Good colors. I, I think the I think the only thing that I would do is I might take down the focus on the log a little bit. Um, mm. Because we don't really know where it is in the shot anyway. On the and on I, the Z axis, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I feel like that that sharpness there is taking away from the limited sharpness that we have on the bird, you know, because we have just really the top of his head that's mostly sharp it's not even like critically sharp obviously bird in motion and there's a lot happening so it's it's fantastic but i, I just i wouldn't want that log competing with my core subject which is the yeah. which is the bird you know i agree and you can't you can't crop it off because then you'll lose you know the wings and the angle and everything which you need to have which i think is just so amazing that you captured all of that yeah yeah we have to literally have to literally draw a circle around this how sharp that is right there right with the little hairs and this little tiny bird in motion landing with a 200 at, at 320 say 320 millimeters she captured capture that and dialed it in right there that is that's pretty dang that's cool good. yeah good job. this could be the subject of a meme going forward where you remove the log <laughs> and have the bird landing on various <laughs> things <laughs> <laughs> you could yeah oh my gosh so many things coming so in so many up. things oh my god <laughs> yeah i love it i love it cool. yeah i dig it yeah th I, you know there's really not a lot else that i can add i mean i i like that the that the composition is great the color contrast gives us good separation on the bird which is fantastic maybe add a little bit more highlight detail in the bird itself you know those white feathers that plumage let that pop a little bit more on the the camera facing side right so we get a little bit more contrast in the face of the bird yeah yeah i love it. that solid solid as a rock yeah i don't shoot birds because they move a lot <laughs> <laughs> don't your brides and, and grooms and <laughs> they don't move <laughs> They don't move much now. They pretty much oh. still the the kids. If there's kids, they tend to wiggle around, but they, you can bribe them. They do a good job. They do what you tell them to do. Yeah, yeah. Joshua Sommerfeld says sometimes when you're trying to decide what to shoot for motion, the answer just swims by. Ooh, we should swim. <laughs> Everybody has these beautiful long lenses. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have anything that long. I got like an I got what an eighty to four hundred Nikon that I like a lot, but sometimes you need more more reach. Yep, yep. Um, I I love you know I always like Joshua's black and white. I like the treatment that he puts on them. I think they're they're really really great. Um, compositionally though, I think I think for me I would probably crop off the top, uh, you know, as much as I could to remove that dark void in that top right corner yeah so and, maybe and, kind of like this or but then how do you do that because it's it's at a it's the the subject is diagonal diagonal in here well i would bring in the left as well so you would have to really just crop the left and the top proportionally in order to keep the the subject matter you know heading from one corner to another and i mm -hmm. think that there's enough detail loss that falls out the back of this image that you could crop that in I just feel like that black void up there, there's not even, well, maybe there are ripples. I can't see them on, on here, but mm -hmm. it, it just, it really doesn't add to the image, right? So we could bring in that crop slightly and then that would give us more attention on, yeah. uh, on the face of this guy. Or we could bring, bring Karen's bird in right there. <laughs> <laughs> Lunch. There <you> go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, having lunch flown in today <laughs> yeah but other than that i i think it's i think it's fantastic i like the fact that the that the head of the alligator i'm, I'm assuming it's an alligator is a slightly brighter than the rest of the image so we know right where to look it's easy to find that face that's that's perfect i just a little bit of cropping for me 
Yeah, I agree. And I think just cropping in a little bit would bring us into that face. I think these these animals, the I'm always drawn to the face because it's they just have these like prehistoric looking faces. And I want to see that. I want to see that much more than I want to see this empty space up here. So probably, yeah, like a, a crop. I mean, you do it depending on how many pixels are in this image, you can do any number of crops. Right. Um, but yeah, I agree just to bring it in a little bit tighter like this so that we can, we don't really need to see the wake that much in the back. I think the subject of this is the face and where, where, uh, the alligator or crocodile is going. Right. I know I'm going to be corrected on which one is salt water, which one's fresh all of it. Um, <laughs> but, but, it's an alligator. Yeah, the 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 gator, the uh, the prehistoric the creature. There you go. Yeah, that's good. The swimming mouth. <laughs> so, but yeah, something like that just to bring us in because this, yeah, like you said, the space outside of that aren't isn't really giving us a whole lot um, unless for the you know the the editorial for this image is about something that needs that void around it but if we're just talking about the the the, the merit of the image on its own bring it in a little bit tighter like that now i'm in the face here i know it's an alligator i know there's a wake obviously going on back there and there's not so much black void up here that's going on yeah yeah good 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 call Yep. All right. Thank you, Joshua Sommerfeld. And then I think, yep. Okay. Raphael Timbergeek Swift says motion cardinal launch. This is the 16 by nine desktop crop. Hence no border jab at Troy Miller. Nikon D850 <laughs> Tamron. See another one of these long lenses, 150 to 600 at 600 F8 at 400th of a second. Look at this guy. Nice. Nice. I'm, I'm, I'm cropping. I'm cropping with my hands right now. I know you are. I see you over there. <laughs> um, you know, I, th I think that with this image, I think that, um, I want just the bird, you know, even, even so much so that I would crop it tight on the bird and I would even take the log out because, because I don't think, because right now the log is bright. It's in focus the bird is in shadow and it's out of focus. And I love the fact that the bird is in motion. I can see what it is. Um, and I want that, but I don't want the log. Mm -hmm. So I realize that that's not what we're presented with. I, I realize that's not what's in frame. So yeah. to speak to the image that's in frame, um, crop it really, really, really tight. Yeah. And yeah. Hide. hide the log. I think I would, I would, personally want a little bit of the log in there. I would, I would crop it more tight like this with just a hair of the log in there. Cause right now looking at it in its entirety, that log is just, it just wants to gobble up that bird. Right. So I, I get it. It's in there. You're showing the scale of the bird and all that, but the, the story is really about this bird just taking off into flight. And I think I'd want the log, a little bit of the log in there just to ground it. So I know that it's just taking off. I know that this is the, the split second after it was not in flight without the log. I think it's just a bird in flight, but with the log in there, it's like, okay, this guy's just taking off trying to get some altitude. So. Yeah. And I, I, I think that that crop would be ideal. It, my challenge with that is, is that the log is going to be in focus yeah that's the other thing yeah you're right you're right and i realize there's there's focus and there's motion so but i think i think that the the, the sharp portion of that image is going to draw your attention so play with that um whatever you do with this uh raviel is definitely crop that log down it, it yeah. minimalized that log quite a bit and and bring us in on that bird i think you've got plenty of resolution so um, mm -hmm. definitely maybe that. even blur it a little bit if you're if you're going to do that crop or mm -hmm. crop like this and where you keep some of it in there maybe bring this down the sharpness of this down so that it's not competing so much with the blurry bird yeah or burn it down so, something something mm -hmm. to drink it yeah but the common consensus with this image is crop that log out a little yeah. bit <laughs> Yeah, because right now, it, as it is, it's a it, the log is the hero. It is the yeah. it is yeah. the star, and the bird is secondary. That's right. Yeah, you could drop Nora's bird in there coming in. <laughs> you totally should. get rid of your bird. <laughs> Put Nora's bird landing on that on that log. 
<laughs> this bird's trying to get away from Nora's bird. Yeah, actually, no, no. Nora, Nora's bird was the swan that was landing with the sharp head. Uh, Karen oh, then, Sweeney's uh, Karen's, Karen yeah, Sweeney's sorry. bird was the meme bird. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's it. That's it. Uh, we've gone through all of them. Time for you to pick your favorite. Your favorite child, Troy Miller. My favorite. My favorite child. It's got to be Amy's. I knew you were going to say that. I already had that. <laughs> I already had that. Look at that. Yep. Look at that. <laughs> ah, so. It's it's so nice and and i just got to say it's more it's more than just the fact that it's a it's a nice blurry image i mean there's you know there's leading lines and there's color harmony and you know there's a hero there's a primary and a secondary hook in that image you know there's a lot of subtleties going on so um very well done yeah very well done oh yeah um amy is on a roll Right. I think she wasn't. Didn't she take it last week, too? I believe. Oh, I don't know. I believe she did. Or, yeah. I think she's, she's been taking a lot of them. So time for uh -oh. everybody to step up. <laughs> Amy and Nora are just bringing it and bringing the pain. <laughs> so, Good for that's them. Cool. All right, man. Well, we're, we're at the end of this one. What are, what's our what's our topic for next week? Next topic. Intersecting lines. Ooh intersecting yeah. lines that's a new one yeah i know gonna make a note look back okay. at our list intersecting In lines so that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting and that's not super easy to shoot either so you know roads power lines some of the obvious things you know crosswalks things like that where they're where they're crossing each other motion would work in there you know if there were mm -hmm. other lines in there you could could blend some motion in there and stuff so yep. Yeah. Yeah. And do the, the intersecting lines, when I think about it, you, I, I automatically go to a grid, but that doesn't, they don't necessarily have to be, you know, it could be naturally intersecting lines. So right, it doesn't necessarily right. have to be like, you know, evenly spaced geometric patterns. It could be just lines that happen to intersect for some reason, like power lines over a, right. over a Vista or something like that. Yep. Right. And so as an, as an example, and Craig, you can't use this image now because I want to use your image as an example. Uh, Craig Stanfley has an image that he photographed from a drone, if I remember, of some power lines. He shot it in black and white going yeah. off into the distance. And it's all intersecting lines, you know, which which is really quite amazing because those intersections draw our attention. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Intersecting lines. I'm looking forward to seeing that one. That's going to be good. Very cool. All right. Well, yeah. we'll leave this one there. I think that's a, that's a good stopping point for this one. Congratulations again, Amy. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'll take him and he get, she's going to be like one of those, one of those famous celebrities with just a shelf full of Emmys that they're they yeah. just, you know, yeah, yeah. I got another one. Let's put it up there. They don't mean anything anymore. You know, so. <laughs> No, that's good. I like the topic too, Troy. I like that intersecting lines. I think that'll be a good one. Good. So we'll, we'll record this one. Um, uh, when are we going to do this one? So this one, you're not doing it next week or next Monday. Maybe I want um, you to do this one. You pick this one. I think you should be the, you should be the host on this one. <laughs> so whenever Troy says we're going to do it, we'll do it. <laughs> so in two weeks well yeah, yeah that'd be the 28th so we have time to find the lines time yes. to find them all right good i think that's good too because this coming week i'm going to be a little bit busy with stuff so yeah so i think that's that's good so we are not going to record a critique on monday uh this coming monday god my calendar is not even up 21. on my screen so 21 yeah. yeah, so we're not going to do a critique on that Monday, so we'll do it on whatever the following Monday from today is, two weeks 28th. from today. 28, end of the month. 28. Look at that. Cool. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching this. Thanks for all the folks that submitted. Congratulations again to Amy Brooks for winning this one. And just fantastic shots all around. I didn't see a – there wasn't a bad shot in the bunch, right? Really, really good. Um, looking forward to seeing what you guys pulled together for leading lines and we'll, or not leading lines, intersecting lines, intersecting <laughs> lines. Yeah. Get it right. So we'll leave it there. All right, folks, you guys have a good week and we'll see you guys, hopefully most of you at the member mixer this Friday at 6 p.m.
This is Twip.